proud of them for doing that. They filmed everything on their own, and they came up with what they wanted to say on their own, and picked the background that they wanted to throw a key out, uh, the chroma key in, um, and they did all their iPads upstairs with, uh, with, them, with the soft smart for myself and Senior Alvarado. So good job for that. Wandering for months, suffering from starvation, desertion, and Indian attacks, 
Narvaez and his remaining crew built makeshift rafts, hoping to sail to Mexico. Narvaez was never seen again. One lucky survivor of the failed Narvaez expedition wrote an account of his experiences and kept detailed notes of the many American Indian tribes he encountered. Upon his return to Spain, Alvar Nunes Cabeza de Vaca published La Realicion, the narratives of his expedition. Another explorer that was also influenced by the achievements of the Spanish before him set sail to Florida in 1539. He landed in the Tampa Bay area and brought with him not only men, horses, pigs, weapons, and supplies, but also infectious diseases such as smallpox and measles. On his march north in search of gold and riches, De Soto was instrumental in contributing to the development of hostile relationships between many Native American tribes and the Europeans. Although he never found the riches in Florida he had found in South America, De Soto was the first European to discover by 1561 the Spanish had not found the riches they sought in Florida and had failed to build a single column. That year, the King of Spain declared Spain was not the only country interested in exploring North America. In 1562, a Frenchman by the name of landed on a small island in the St. John's River, erected a marker with a bronze shield, and claimed Florida. The French group received a friendly welcome from the Zanuqua, with whom they traded. Ribot turned his fleet north and sailed up the coast to South Carolina, where he found the Charles Fort. Ribot, however, soon set sail for France to secure supplies for the small settlement. In 1564, who had sailed with Ribot to Florida two years earlier, settled in present-day Jacksonville and built Fort Caroline. The artist was one of the settlers of Fort Caroline. Lemoyne traveled through North Florida, charting the coastline and the light lives of the native Tumuco Indians. His engravings gave a detailed account of the early Native American ways of life. While the life of Fort Caroline flourished at first, problems soon arose. The Tumuco became tired of supplying the colonists with food. Many colonists were more interested in seeking gold and silver than farming, and the colony soon attracted the attention of the Spanish. The Spanish decided this French port was much too close to their treasure room, and the stage was set for battle. Ribot, who had been spending some time as a prisoner in the Tower of London, was quickly bonded and sent to Florida to protect Fort Carolina. The Spanish, not to be outdone, sent their own next pawn. <laughs> to attack Fort Caroline and drive out the French. Upon arrival, however, Menendez found the mouth of the St. John's River blockaded by rebel ships. Menendez turned his fleet south and sailed into a protected harbor. It was at this harbor that he found the settlement of St. Augustine. Rebeau decided to give chase, but many of his ships were destroyed by a massive storm. Menendez marched his troops north and led a surprise attack on Fort Caroline. Vladimir Lemoyne escaped. <laughs> Rabeau was sent to death. Menendez of St. Augustine became the first permanent European settlement in North America. Despite Menendez's efforts, St. Augustine struggled. The settlement suffered from disease, desertion, Indian attacks, and threats from other nations. A British explorer and privateer or as some would call him, pirate, began attacking the treasure fleet and coastal settlements of Spain. In 1586, he raided St. Augustine and issued the dreadful orders to burn the town. Over the next 80 years, the Spanish settlement suffered pirate attacks, hurricanes, floods, and another fire. But each time the settlers rebuilt their homes and wooden fort. In 1672, the Spanish decided to build a sturdier fort. The Castillo de San Marcos took 20 years to build. Built out of Coquina Stone, the fort withstood two more British attacks. 
Due to the success of Spanish colonialism in Florida, Spain sent missionaries to convert what they thought were the native savages. During this time, Native Americans adopted the European way of life. Many, however, were forced to accept it. Many of the workers who helped build the Cio de San Marcos were state slaves from the northern British colonies that had agreed to accept the Roman Catholic religion in return for protection and freedom. The black militia, under the leadership of, helped defend the court against British attacks and won the respect of the Spanish. In 1738, the Spanish governor granted the Africans their own land. Fort Jose lies two miles north of St. Augustine and was the first free African settlement in what is now the United States. In 1741, the British captured Menendez and resold him into slavery. But by 1752, he was able to return to Fort Jose of freedom. The love of freedom was shared by another group, the Seminole Indians. As a result of the northern British settlements, many Native American groups migrated to Florida. The Spanish had brought disease and war to the Native Americans in Florida. Almost all the original cultures of Florida had disappeared. The few that remained joined those that migrated from the north. Some of them had left Spanish missions rather than give up their own beliefs. The first civil war began in 1818, then came the second in 1835. With each war, the Seminole population and land shrank. Many were forced to leave Florida and were displaced to reservations. By the end of the Third Seminole War in 1858, less than 200 Florida Seminoles remained. Those remaining few are the only tribe to carry on their culture and remain. Some say their native name comes from the Spanish word cimarrones, which means runaways. Many Native Americans, however, believe the name means free people. And so concludes Florida's early history. Bye. 
Eli, Bailey, and Zoe. Thank you so much. You did a great job.